Okay, here we're going to solve the equation 4 times u to the 6th equals 16. So the first thing I'm going to do is just divide both sides by 4. That'll give us u to the 6th equals 4. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 6th root of each side. So we're trying to find the 6 distinct roots of the number 4 is what we're going to try to do. So to do that, I'm going to use the following result, is that if we have a complex number z that's written in trigonometric form, then we can use the following formula to find the indistinct roots of that complex number. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the number 4 as a complex number in trigonometric form. So first I'm just going to write it in standard form. So that's 4 plus 0i. And if you think about plotting that, complex number. It's just going to be sitting out on the real axis. So the r value, which is the distance to the origin, the r value is clearly going to be 4, and I think it's easy to pick out that the angle theta is also just going to be 0. So in trigonometric form, we can write our the number 4 as 4 times cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0. So now we've got it in trigonometric form. So now I'm going to find the six distinct roots of that complex number 4. So we'll have the sixth root. We're going to have the sixth root of the r value. So we've got the sixth root of the number 4. And then we're going to have cosine of, well, let's see, we've got theta, we said that was 0, we've got plus 2 pi times k, now that's going to change, so I'm going to leave that open for a second. Again, n is equal to 6, and then we'll have plus i times sine of, again, our theta value is 0, plus 2 pi times, again, the k value, which is going to change, all over the n value of 6. And our k value, in this case, is going to vary. It'll start at 0, and it'll go up to 5. So our k value is going to have to range from, from 0 up to 5. So I'm just going to leave, I'm just going to put a little k right there, just to indicate that that's the only part of my formula that's really going to start changing now. And then we're just going to have to start simplifying as well. Um, one thing I want to point out, because I'm going to do this as well, we can actually simplify the sixth root of 4. So the sixth root of 4, we could write that as 4 raised to the 1 sixth power. But we could actually also write that as 4 raised to the 1 half raised to the 1 third power, because right we would just multiply the exponents to get 1 sixth. Well, 4 to the 1 half, that's really just the square root of 4, which is 2. So we have 2 to the 1 third power, or the cube root of 2. So I'm going to rewrite the 6 root of 4 as the cube root of 2. So one little simplification there as well. So now we've just got lots of different cases here. So when k equals 0, we'll have the 6 root of 4. But again, we said we're going to write that as the cube root of 2. And then we'll have cosine of, well, I'm just going to forget about the 0 because, right, that's not going to change anything. If k equals 0, we'll just have cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0. So that'll be the case for k equals 0. And let's see, I guess in that case... Cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so we'll just be left with the cube root of 2 as one of our solutions. And again, that corresponds to k equals 0. If we do k equals 1, again, we'll have the cube root of 2, and now that's going to be multiplied by cosine of, well, in this case, our k value will be 1, so we'll have 2 pi divided by 6 which, again, we can certainly simplify. Okay, so 2 pi over 6, that's just pi over 3 if we reduce it. 
So we've got the cube root of 2, cosine of pi over 3, that's going to be 1 half. And then sine of pi over 3, that's going to be root 3 over 2. And if you want to, you can, we can rewrite this uh, just a little bit. So we've got the cube root of 2, and then we can write this as 1 plus the square root of 3 times i over 2. That'll be another one of our solutions. And now I'm just going to keep going. So at this point, it's not too bad. It's just, just doing the arithmetic. So let's see. We did k equals 0, k equals 1. If k equals 2, we'll have that cube root of 2. We'll have cosine. I'm just going to go ahead and simplify. So if we substitute, substitute in 2, we'll have 4 pi over 6, which is going to be 2 pi over 3, plus i times sine of. Again, we'll have 2 pi times 2, which will be 4 pi over 6. And again, that reduces to 2 pi over 3. And if we simplify this one, well, let's see, cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's going to be negative 1 half. Sine of 2 pi over 3, that's still going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So we've got the cube root of 2. And again, we can write this as a single fraction. We can write this as negative 1 plus the square root of 3 times i all over 2. Let's do k equals 3. So if we substitute in k equals 3, we've got the cube root of 2. We'll have cosine of, well now we would have, uh, if we put in k equals 3, we'll have 3 times 2 pi, which will be 6 pi over 6. We'll just be left with cosine of pi plus i times the sine of pi. Well, sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi, that's just going to give us negative 1. So in this case, we'll be left with negative of the cube root of 2. Let's do k equals 4. So again, we've got the cube root of 2. We'll have cosine. Now if we substitute in k equals 4, we'll have 8 pi over 6, and that reduces to 4 pi over 3 plus i times sine of 4 pi over 3. And in this case, now we're going to be down in the third quadrant, if you think about the angle 4 pi over 3. So cosine of 4 pi over 3, that's going to be negative 1 half. Sine of 4 pi over 3, that's going to be negative root 3 over 2. And again, we can rewrite this as negative 1 minus the square root of 3 times i all over 2. And last but not least, let's do k equals 5. So if we do k equals 5, we've got the cube root of 2. We'll have cosine of, well now we'll have 10 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6, that's going to reduce to 5 pi over 3. Well, 5 pi over 3, that's going to put you in the fourth quadrant. Cosine of 5 pi over 3, that's going to be positive 1 half. Sine of 5 pi over 3, that's going to be negative root 3 over 2. And again, we can rewrite this simply as... 1 minus the square root of 3 times i over 2. And now we found all five, or excuse me, all six solutions. We start at k equals 0, go up to 5, but that does give us uh, all six solutions.